In today's photo deconstruction, I'm going to show you how I go outside to use creative natural light to make an image that is colorful, poppy, and eye-catching. I am not afraid of hard light. Man, you check me in the studio and I'm regularly using a bare bulb or something like a magnum reflector. And I love it because it gives me so much control. It's a lot of contrast, sharp shadows, really poppy imagery. And so when I go outside, I'm not afraid of hard light either. And that's why I find direct sunlight to be one of the best tools for creative natural light. So I wanna take you behind the scenes and show you how I created this photograph using nothing more than a black V-flat behind her as a background and a piece of plastic to create that super graphic, colorful pattern on her face. All right, so first, let me show you what it looks like behind the scenes outdoors for my setup. All right, so what you notice about this scene, first of all, is of course, I put my subject in direct sunlight. So many people are afraid of direct sunlight because it's hard on the skin. Well, first of all, one of the things I'll do is, well, have good makeup. Uh, but I also realize that sometimes you have to retouch and I'll show you a little bit of that later on. Now to make this shot look really clean and graphic and bold, which is my style, what I did is I made it look like she was standing in front of a background. And so when I sat her on the ground here, we used a black V-flat, specifically it was a, the V-flat world V-flat behind her. And the reason I used that is because it folds so it could support itself and it doesn't have to take up a huge amount of space. So it gave me a really dark, clean background to start off with. All right, next up, let's take a look at the prop that I am using here. So this is an acrylic pyramid. I have no idea what the real purpose of this item is. Uh, here in New York, we have something called Canal Plastics, which sells plexiglass and reflective mirror and acrylic shapes for displays, including this acrylic pyramid. But you can also look these up online and there are a ton of different shapes. They're actually priced a little bit more than you would expect uh, for a simple piece of plastic, but they definitely won't break the bank. All right, so my idea here was that I was using direct sunlight on the subject's face. I have her actually facing directly towards where the sun is, which tends to be a little bit difficult on the eyes. But the reason I did that is I wanted the shadows to be underneath her nose or not too much on the side of her face. I, I really didn't want you know, half of her face to be in shadow and the other half lit. So it's kind of paramount light using the sun. All right, so then what I needed to do is put that plastic pyramid in between the subject and the sun so that the light going through it, it's somewhat translucent, would actually cast that shape onto the face. Actually, what I wanna do is I wanna show you what these items look like up close. So if you're searching, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, so here are two of these plastic shapes that I, I own. I have cubes and I have pyramids. There are spheres, there's all different sorts of shapes. So this is what you're looking for. All right, but let's actually go back to our scene. So you can see that he's holding that pyramid. Uh, one trick is the closer that you bring that pyramid shape to the subject's face, the more defined that the shape will be. Basically, if I'm holding it five feet away from her, the edges won't be quite as defined. So if you do try this, you need to bring it a little bit closer. All right, so let's talk a little bit about my camera and camera settings. So in this image, I'm using the Canon R5 and the 85 millimeter 1.2. Now, the reason I selected the 85 millimeter 1.2 is because well, 85 is just beautiful compression. And then if I decided that maybe the V-flat behind her needed to be out of focus a little bit, I could go to a wider aperture, uh, but it's just a gorgeously sharp lens. But let's take a look at my settings. In this instance, I am shooting at 1 2,000th of a second, like super, super fast. And the reason that I had to do that, even though I'm at ISO 100, is because I'm shooting at f2.2. Like I went with a wide aperture, but she is in direct sunlight. So I have to use a really fast shutter speed to get the correct exposure on the face. So remember that's kind of your exposure triangle. Usually if you're shooting in direct sunlight, you're going to have to be shooting at that lower ISO. Before I take you to show you what I've done with retouching, I actually wanna show you a couple more behind the scenes just so you could see some different perspectives. In this image, you can see how close my assistant is to her face to get that really crisp line. And then here's another perspective. So we're varying the distance and the angle of that shape because every time we do, it makes a different result, a different composition. All right, so let's take a look at what I did in post-processing. Okay, so here's the image straight out of camera, no retouching, no contrast, no changes. This is what I'm analyzing as I look at the photograph. Well, first of all, even though the V-flat behind her is black, it appears kind of gray. I mean, it's being hit by direct sunlight. So 
I don't know, I don't think that has the contrast that I want. I know I'm going to want to make that background look darker. Next up, the eye makeup that she has on, my intention was to match it to the color that was cast on her face by that pyramid, but it's, it's a little bit off, it's not quite the same, so I do think I'm going to want to shift that. And then, as you can see, the super, super hard sunlight, well, it shows skin texture. And so her skin has a lot of little imperfections, a lot of little blemishes that if I were using a softer light source or I had a bounce light source, you probably wouldn't see all of that texture. However, if I were using soft light sources, I couldn't get that creative in camera effect. So it's kind of a trade-off that you just have to be okay with. So this is straight out of camera, but let me show you my retouch. So darken down the background, shifted the color more to a pink rather than a purple. And then there's some drastic uh, evening out of the texture on her skin. You'll also notice on her shoulders that I actually copied one shoulder uh, to mimic the other because it, it looked weird that there was more shadow on one side than the other, considering that the shadow underneath her nose was relatively even. So the idea behind that was just, it created more symmetry to the shot. It made it a little bit more graphic. There's quite a bit of skin work on this, but that is just something that you usually have to deal with when you're shooting in direct sunlight. Now, one little variation I did want to share with you is her skin is super pale here. Um, that wasn't Photoshop. It was the fact that I overexposed just a little bit. I probably overexposed a third to two thirds of a stop for that really pale skin. And the thought process behind that is that I wanted her face to be kind of a pure white canvas so that that color was such a pop and contrast against it rather than being, you know, rich, uh, regular skin tone. So in the shot, her skin, not retouched, already looks pale. And so I was playing around with it a little bit and I actually went where her skin was like pure white. So here's what I actually captured or here's the skin tone that I ended up with, but I did play around with it even more pale. Uh, the reason I didn't end up going with this exact retouch is because I thought it started to look too selective color. Like part of the face was in black and white and the other part was in color, but it's definitely something that I regularly play around with when I really desaturate the skin tones. But in this instance, I didn't even really need to. So let's talk about the takeaways from this photo deconstruction. Uh, first and foremost, you know what? Don't be afraid of direct sunlight. You can create really interesting images because sunlight gives you shadows and pop and contrast that you can't get with a cloudy day or a soft light source. And remember, if you get something like a gel or a piece of plastic that's translucent and you hold it in between the sun and your subject, well, you can do some pretty interesting and eye-catching things. If you like the image that we made here and you want to check out the gear used in the making of this shot, be sure to check out the links in the description below. And of course, if you like the idea of creative natural light, well, guess what? I have a lighting recipe guide dedicated specifically to that topic and you'll definitely want to check it out. Now be sure to like and subscribe because guess what? I have a lot more of videos just like these coming your way. See you next time.